Good morning. <clears throat> this young man standing before you today is Cliff Benson. This old man is Doug Sargent. Our lives intersected about three and a half years ago, initially at church and then over coffee. And since then, we have become very dear friends on our spiritual journey together. Cliff, maybe you could share your uh, story with us, please. <clears throat> I grew up in a Christian home where my parents introduced me to Jesus as part of my Christian upbringing. I knew of Jesus, but I didn't know him personally in my daily prayer life was an activity that I needed to cross off my daily task list. As I grew older, I felt further away from God and adopted science as my truth. I could understand it better and make sense of the world around me. I began to believe that people needed God and faith as something to believe in, to feel secure, to have significance and to belong to a community. Though I had not known at the time, but this newfound knowledge was starting to make me prideful. I took this worldview and started to apply it to how I saw people. I felt I knew the truth better than they did. However, though I felt my beliefs aligned with science, I felt discontent. And being involved in a workspace service felt wasteful. I wasn't, having, I wasn't having any luck in my career. I had difficulties in furthering my education and to secure a job I spent four years of a degree on. Some days I questioned my sanity and asked myself, why is this happening to me? All of these failures and shortcomings were making me feel angry and resentful. Every disappointment became a source to drive myself to what I wanted. My anger, hurt, and pride were becoming unhealthy. And instead of finding healthy ways to address them, I was using them as a way to motivate myself, to push myself forward. In 2019, I was invited to a Baptist service and I met a good friend who came along beside me in my walk with God. I came to know Jesus Christ as the Son of God who came to take my sins upon himself. Jesus died for my sins and was, res and was resurrected so that I may have life. I came to know God as my loving Heavenly Father, with whom I have a relationship with today. I, I offered up my pride, anger to God, and forgave others, just like my Heavenly Father forgave me. Science has its place, but God is wondrous and immeasurable. He's only to be experienced through trust and faith. Having a relationship with my Heavenly Father has given me hope, which I never had before. God has removed the burden of anger from me and has set me free. I still struggle with my life, with work. I still ask God every, every day, Father, why have you put me on this path? But now I get an answer, and that answer is clear as a bell because I need you to depend on me every day for everything. I want to be baptized to tell others that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. I've offered up myself forward to him. I belong to God, and I trust him with my life. Praise God, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 What you are about to witness is what the scriptures refer to as believer's baptism. Cliff, baptism, as you have just shared, you know does not make you a believer in Christ. It's your public declaration that you are already a believer, as you have just shared with us. It's kind of like a wedding ring. It doesn't make you married. It declares that you already are. In fact, you know, you look pretty good with one of these on your hand, you know. <laughs> just, just an idea, okay? <laughs> By your baptism, before this, your church family, number one, you are making a public declaration of your voluntary submission 
to the Lordship of Jesus Christ as your Savior in obedience to his command. By your baptism, you are counting the cost, openly identifying yourself as a Christ follower. By your baptism, you are raising the flag of your new citizenship in a heavenly kingdom. By your baptism, you are shouting to the world that you are under new ownership. You are no longer you are own, your own. And you are declaring that you have been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. And so, Cliff, based on your profession of faith that we have just heard, I'm going to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, being buried with him in the likeness of his death, and raised to live a new life in the power of the Holy Spirit as a fruitful disciple of Jesus Christ. 